G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here, back for some more pauper action. So a couple of changes between uh, today's league and the previous one. We have removed Cartouche of Knowledge in favor of Satessin Training. Um, a little bit easier to cast on the Satessin Training. I found a few awkward positions where maybe I'd want to cast Cartouche of Knowledge, but then I'd have a White Aura in hand as well. And if there was a spare land, it was likely tapping for green mana. So I'm going to be uh, bringing in that said Tessin training instead. Um, now I'm going to be running this at three copies rather than the four copies that I had Cartouche of Knowledge out. Um, additionally, Rancor is going to be going from two copies back up to three. I'm going to be running three Cartouche of Solidarity and I'm upping Sentinel's Eyes from one to two copies. So outside of that, most of the deck is fairly self-explanatory. We've got some Hexproof Creatures. Uh, we've only got two Silhana Ledgewalker because at two mana they're harder to cast and less viable in some matchups. We do have Commune as that cantrip, being able to search for the top four cards of our library for an enchantment or land that we don't have. So early game is going to provide that mana fixing. Later on it's going to provide that aura selection. And we are all in on Armadillo Cloak and at uh, three copies of Ancestral Mask, just because it's a little bit clunky um, to cast masks sometimes, especially without Lotus Petal, which I've done in previous videos. Um, that being said, we should still be able to find plenty of copies of Mask when we need it, because Commune's going to help get us there. So in the sideboard, we have made a minor adjustment to what I concluded on at the end of last video. So we are going to be including Relic of Progenitus again. Um, so there are a couple of decks that utilize their graveyard, most notably probably the Ephemerate Tron deck, which is running around wreaking havoc, being very, very strong, and also being difficult to interact with. So if we stop them from having a graveyard, we can stop them from having their lock. They typically only run one to two copies of Ephemerate, and like one to two copies of Ghostly Flicker. And it's not uncommon uncommon for it to be one of each, rather than slipping a second copy in there. The decks are pretty greedy like that. Um, I still got Flaring Pain, which is good there, good against Corgate. Got Ram Through for where we might want to remove our opponent's creatures. Young Wolf to protect ourselves from Diabolic Edicts. Scattershot Archer for that Notorious Fairy matchup. And Burn for that... Well, mostly favoured burn matchup, but definitely should have some description of sideboard interaction for that. Okay, here we are for this first match. Versing Pox Walker, we have won the Daryl here. Um, I think this hand is a keep. It's potentially a little bit slow. Um, I'm going to be looking to lead on the Turn 1 Utopia Sprawl here. This is good against, like, pretty much everything, really. Uh, it's going to guarantee that we have white mana and have decent tempo for the uh, second turn, so... Uh, a little more viable uh, doing this while on the... Wait, I was going to Utopia Sprawl. Oh my goodness, I'm already misplaying. Alright, apologies guys. Uh, Radiant Fountain from the opponent, getting some life. Yeah, definitely should have gone for that Utopia Sprawl, because uh, now I've just like net lost one mana. And uh, only got myself to blame on that one. So we'll go ahead and attack for one point. So Boris Garrison from our opponent... I guess it's just a red-white deck. All right, cool. So we find Rancor, which is a good find because it does help us utilize that green mana that's going to be getting created every turn. And nice aggressive attack for six. All right, opponent with the Radiant Fountain gaining some life. Rafini's Informant, yep. And we can already see Prismatic Strands to the Graveyard. 1-1 uh, counter on Rafini's Informant. Find Ancestral Mask, so that's a bit annoying. Getting a little bit land screwed here. Let's continue to be as aggressive as humanly possible. So we'll go ahead and attack for 11. We'll see if our opponent wants to start cashing this one in. The flashback is just tap an untapped white creature. Our opponent does cash it in now. I think this deck runs four copies of Prismatic Strands in the main deck. Um, so there's another three sources and potentially another six casts that we'll have to deal with for that. Fortunately, our creature is big. It's only going to get bigger and likely just one connection, one, one attack connecting, and we're going to have the victory there. Alright, so the second one, Journey to Nowhere, 
connived into the graveyard. Thrabian Inspector, getting that clue token. And currently our opponents put up a fair bit of toughness to try and block us out. That would have been a really good spot to draw mana. Because then we could have just aggroed our opponent to all high end. Alright, so we'll go ahead and Sentinel's Eyes so our opponent won't have any good crack back on us. And looks like we get to put them to a potential 3 if they don't block with anything. Uh, I don't see any value in them actually putting forth a block here. Assuming they have the ability to hard cast this next turn. Alright, so opponent tapping a little bit of mana during their turn. Oh, drawing a card with the clue token. We like to see that. And our opponent concedes. Um, so I think we were a little bit lucky there. Um, we sort of stumbled a fair bit with our mana. And also our sequencing was not the best. Um, we got fairly lucky, however, that our opponent didn't draw the nuts like very quickly and we just had our high quality auras in ethereal armor combined with trample to just really really make us aggressive despite the slow start all right so here we can see a bora synth deck um this particular one is not running the fog effects all right so put up this mid-range one instead so we can see here two copies of prismatic strands main deck in this version. Um, we can see Glinthawk, Guy Clan Shaman, that's pretty important information. Uh, of course, Guy Fisher as well, so they'll play some of these value cards like Experimental Synthesizer, Iclaw Wellspring, they'll bounce them to the battlefield, they'll replay them, they'll continue to get as much value as possible, and it'll be, so be sacked to a Kildroth's Rebirth. Um, the main cards to worry about here are Guy Clan Shaman, and Dawnbringer Cleric, that's an annoying one. I don't have tech for Dawnbringer at the moment, plus Revoke. Reminder as well, guys, if you do find this video entertaining or informative, please consider subscribing. Um, so Crimson Acolyte, really good tech against Carclan Shaman, gives us that protection. Um, Flaring Pain, really good tech into uh, <laughs> the fog effects from our opponents. So after that, it's just the removal effects, and we don't have anything in the sideboard for that. Um, so I guess we'll ignore that side of things. Um, Ancestral Mask is sort of like weak on its own. Maybe it's okay to have one or two copies of that. I'm going to lean on like starting two copies out. Realistically, Armadillo Cloak is going to be pretty good in most spots. After that, maybe just to cut you to Solidarity, because that doesn't seem super important here. Opponent keeps a 7, and we're going to be mulling ours. This looks a bit better, but obviously a little bit aura light, so we can ditch one Utopius rule. And they're like planes passing into us. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that our opponent does have a hate card here. Uh, like, Revoke Exister, Dawnbringer Cleric, maybe Dawnbringer Plus Ephemerate. We'll see what their particular build is shortly, I'm sure. Find another crystal grotto, and uh, well, I mean, at least they scry, but we're not in a good point to be playing either of them, really. And, uh, <laughs> regrettably, <laughs> we're be generating a fair bit of mana here, but, uh, regrettably, not the most aggressive start. At least we can get in for one. Opponent not putting up blockers yet. Also, we have done some adjustments to our uh, sound settings here, equalizer effects in uh, OBS, so hopefully you guys can hear and enjoy that and it's useful to you all. So we don't see Dawnbringer Cleric menacingly holding up the planes here, I mean there's a high likelihood of Ephemerate. Yep, so he's just going after both of our mana sources there. Um, I don't think that's the best use for Ephemerate, so we'll just take it on the chin. I don't think our opponent has a way to return this from the graveyard. Uh, so it's probably fine to just not... Yeah, we'll keep this on top. It's probably fine to not extend auras out here to let this ephemerate fizzle. Um, so let's just pass the turn back to our opponent. We'll let this fizzle. All right, and I mean, they can still recast it and they can still scry to or... Gain 2 life, exile a card from a graveyard. So yeah, they'll, they'll probably opt to gain 2 life here. So up to 21. 
Raiding your Fountain up to 23. Feeney's Informant, sure. And we can see Prismatic Strands to the Graveyard. Sentinel's Eyes, we knew we were going to draw that one. So, play a Grotto, scry pretty much any aura to the top. You are not an aura. Goodbye. Filter White and give Vigilance. Filter White and First Strike. Now we can attack here. It's pretty bad into an Ephemerate on the Dawnbringer. Uh, I think we're in a bad spot regardless if that's the case. And I think we want to pressure our opponent. Um, actually, no, no, this is just loose. No, I'm just throwing away my creature. Okay, he had Ephemerate. Um, he didn't need to cast Ephemerate. So if he blocks, taps his creatures in response, pretend, prevents damage from green creatures, then he'd be able to block here and deal four damage to us while not taking any damage. Yeah. All right, so that, that was wrong from me. I, I misplayed that a lot. Looks like we're not being super punished for it, but... It's all, right. all right, so he is flashing that back. That's fine. Um, our opponent could have done the same sequence without wasting the ephemerate there, so we're fortunate that he's, he's wasted an ephemerate here. <laughs> Oh, and he's uh, removing Sentinel's Eyes from our graveyard, so it's a pretty good tech. Maybe that was calculated, actually. Maybe I'm not giving our opponent enough credit. So hopefully just the two co copies of Strands. Um, hopefully we draw to some auras as well. Opponent draws with the Clue token, two in hand. Attacking us for three, and we'll go ahead and take. An aura. That's an aura. Um, I'll opt to, like, cast this in front of Armadillo Cloak. Armadillo Cloak's like really, really necessary. At the moment I'm just looking to cantrip some auras to get a board presence. That one's fine. And we find a planes. Um, eh. <laughs> sort of a non-event. So we'll play that one out and pass turn. Alright, so here comes Boris Garrison floating mana on the Radiant Fountain, bouncing the Radiant Fountain. And five mana, is this like Convoke? No, Goliath Paladin. Enters the battlefield, take the initiative. All right, so two one-one counters on target creature. Uh, they get to goad a creature, so they can actually goad our creature next time. That would be awful. It's where they like force it into attacking. So we're gonna have to find some first strike at the very least here. Hopefully Ethereal Armor, that would be our best possible draw. Yikes. Um, I think we just jump ship and start going in on Scout, assume the Warrior token is going to die. And we do play the Armadillo Cloak this turn, even though it exposes a potential like Ephemerate removal or just like a second Dawnbring Cleric. Um, on the like, we're pretty far behind at this point. I think our opponent's pretty far to uh, winning, pretty close to winning. Pardon me. Um, and we need to like high roll an, an Ancestral Mask as a one of to really have like a big attack that we need. Yeah. So there's Dawnbringer. Um, again, we we're assuming that we we're going to lose to that one anyway. So doesn't really make a huge difference. Opponent did decide to scry two with their Undercity. Um, and they scryed two to the top. Wow, just all the gas. Holy smoke. Inspiring Overseer. Yep. Attacking with this guy and that guy. Um, Alright, so they can still go to creature. So Warrior Token can be, can be forced into attacking next turn. The Earl Armor is arguably the best find. Could be look too little too late though. Um, so currently 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 damage on board. Presume we block 3, block 2 first strike. So we're taking... So we'll take 7 and be on exactly 1. I guess we can play it out. I mean any more of these ephemerates and we're just dead though. 
assuming... Oh, they tra create a treasure token with this one. I think that's a bit redundant. They have crazy amounts of mana as it is. Spirited Companion. Well, that one would buff up our Ancestral Mask if we draw it. Cracks Clue. Two in hand. Maybe the mana is relevant. <laughs> and Revoke Existence. Alright, that's game. We'll go to sideboarding. Uh, so Flaring Pain, maybe less important. Um, I think now that we know that they're on more of an ephemerate list, Ram Through goes up in value. Maybe it's a little bit more like this. Ancestral Mask is still just that awkward aura. Maybe two copies. It's a touch better. Uh, I'm just not seeing room for two copies at the minute. I don't think we want to go down to zero flaring pain. I think one flaring pain is correct from what we've seen. Alright, so turn one Utopia Sprawl, turn two Acolyte, sure. It's not hexproof, so our opponent can goad it, but it does have protection from shaman, so that's an upside. So there is a positive and a negative to having Acolyte over Bogle. In this matchup. In, in burn it's like pretty much just positive. Opponent plays crossroads. Gains two life. Find uh, another utopius rule. And can avoid that one. Just play out the acolyte. Pass the turn. So we're uh, a bit opposite from last game. We're like full of stacked stuff in our hand. Um, we just need to hit the mana to resolve it now. Opponent with spirited companion. Sure. That's fine by me. All right, and we do find Grotto, so that's quite nice. Scry. Armadillo Cloak, so I think I'm going to put this on top. Prana didn't go after our Utopia Sprawl, which leads me to believe they don't have Revoke, they don't have Dawnbringer. They saw that we missed a land drop, they chose not to interact in that manner with us. So let's Abundant Growth here. Thero here. And Cartouche here. And I'm assuming our opponent's just going to chump block this, fog the damage before we get trample. Looks like that is what they decide. Cool. We're not like super unhappy about that anyway. Um, oh, there's Dawnbringer. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Uh, we're not like super unhappy about that though because that's like one less creature that Prismatic Strands can have, right? Alright, so another Armadillo Cloak, so green, this one over here, I guess we'll go for extra green sources this time, and we've got many an Armadillo Cloak. Alright, so opponent takes it, we gain some life, see if these shenanigans begin. We are fairly well placed to at least begin battling through them. Thrabian Inspector, that's a good start. Attacking with Dawnbringer, I mean, I think this means he's got Ephemerate. Um, there's no reason that he'd want to block with it, even if he didn't, though. No, he'd just, like, want to draw Ephemerate. Yeah, there's Ephemerate. Super lame. Uh, I hope to find a First Strike or It looks like they're going after Armadillo Cloak, which is playing into our hand's favor. So just go ahead and attack again. Then we can play some commune setup in the second main. And what do we find? Just forests? Oh lame. Flaring pain to the bottom. That's kind of sad. That would have been a handy one. So Ephemerate, Dawnbringer. I'm assuming targeting the cloak. Yep. I think they should be doing that with Dawnbringer instant speed as well during my attack step. And obviously with the rebound, they don't have the choice. Wow, just Dawnbringer for days. <clears throat> Alright, so first strike enchantment would be really, really handy right now. 
Uh, actually, like, Acolyte's looking a fair bit weaker than Suhana Ledgewalker right now, isn't he? It's pretty upsetting. Alright, just continue the onslaught and hope that's all the ephemerates. At least we get Rankle back. Uh, again, they can have Revoke Existence, but we just hope they don't. I, I don't see a world where we allow a deck that has this much card draw extra time and hope for a more viable outcome. Like, we've, we've got to hope they just run out of gas here. Revoke Existence. Speak of that freaking devil and he shall appear. So right now we're almost seeing a weakness... Oh, fuck me, man. A weakness of Crystal Grotto versus uh, Cave of Temptation, which could be sacrificed for 4 mana, plus tapping itself to put 2 one, one counters on your creature. Let's attack. I think if we trade this with a Dawnbringer, it's not great still. Maybe, maybe I just shouldn't attack, actually. I'm just throwing away an Armadillo Cloak for our opponent here. Alright, well, wait. This is fine, because our creature lives. I'm confused as to why they went for that. Because they triple block and lose one Dawnbringer, but we lose our creature and Armadillo Cloak. Uh, I think we both misplayed that. Dawnbringer attacking, sure thing. 33 plays 9. Of course, Skyfisher, great. <laughs> oh goodness, this is this is a tough one to battle through. Ram through. Does that change anything? We can ram through in response to the Dawnbringer to remove it. I guess that's our best line. If they draw Ephemerate, then we could be in trouble, but they have to have land plus Ephemerate, I think. Well, there's the land, so get, get ready to get blown out on this convoluted line of mine. All right, no Ephemerate, please. Alright, well, the fight effect does go through successfully. We lose our Armadillo Cloak, but the Dawnbringer Cleric is in the graveyard. So, small victories. Uh, Alright, another Thrabian Inspector. So, best thing would be, like, Satessan Training into First Strike Aura. Or just First Strike Aura. Yeah, Ethereal Armor. Love it. Sign me up. Let's go. Tack on in. Opponent cashing in their Thrabian Inspector, cool beans. Plays a Spirited Companion. And we see a cycle on the secluded step. They're digging, uh, gaining some life off Crossroads. Okay, well that's a good sign. Hopefully Trample now. Come on, deck. Not Trample, lame. So, I think we leave Scout in hand for now. There's still a little bit of a risk of Cock Clan Shaman. I think my opponent's primarily white, apart from maybe for Experimental Synthesizer. Um, but we're very far away from attacking wide still, and I just want to protect a little bit here. Sax Clue. Inspiring Overseer, drawing a card. Alright, gaining life. Come on deck, let's find some trample, let's find some action. Or even like another ethereal armor so I can start attacking with two creatures, that'd be pretty nice. Opponent getting in with Skyfisher. Alright, down to 34. Ah, uh, we blank again. That's so painful, man. Alright, get in there. I imagine your opponent's going to block with Thrabian Inspector, which turns on attacks with these other creatures next turn. Otherwise, they just take the um, free block on one of these creatures. 
with the two toughness creature and uh, I'm sure they've got some action though because they'll land screwed for a very long time. Draws a card with the clue token. Rafini's informant connive. Ah, oh, rats, man. Prismatic strands to the grave. Dawnbringer cleric. Come on, opponent, man. Jesus. That's seven enchantments we've had removed. <clears throat> That's an effect. All right, let's see what our opponent does. This is a reoccurring one as well. Um, I guess they'll just block with Rafini's informant and we'll be okay with that, really. So this is kind of interesting. Um, our Rancor is protecting itself from Revoke Existence, which is only sorcery speed at the moment, as long as we're suiciding the creature here. And I can't think of a better thing to do, so let's do that. <laughs> I think uh, Rancor stays in hand. Alright, opponent makes a land drop, Spirited Companion, draw trigger. Inspiring Overseer, draw trigger. Arabian Inspector, clue token. Alright, has this deck got legs or has this deck got legs? Holy smokes. 34 cards? Jesus. Uh, so we don't have any blocks, so we'll take the 4 damage. Alright, any aura. Please deck. That is not any aura. Yeah, these Acolytes look so much worse than the Silhana Ledge Walkers here. I really had my opponent pegged differently. Uh, let's just continue to throw away our creatures to control our opponent's board because we are creature rich right now. Um, might as well. Blocks with the Inspector rather than the Spirited Companion. Curious. Alright, draws with Clue Token. Oh, something big. So that's uh, Paladin again. No, this is a new card. Custody Squire, flying 3-3, three, three, will of the council. When it enters the battlefield, starting with you, each player votes for an artifact, creature, or enchantment card in your graveyard. Return each card with the most votes, or tied for the most votes. Okay. Opponent votes for Dawnbringer Cleric. Uh, okay, which Dawnbringer Cleric did you vote for? How do I how do I view which Dawnbringer Cleric? I swear to God, if he gets two here, this is going to be absolutely revolting. I'm going to click on the higher one in case he's trying to get, like, trickier. Um, so we see one Dawnbringer Cleric to hand, I believe. I think we navigated that one right. So now it's six in the air. Only one armadillo cloak left. Uh, if we could get our other sentinel's eyes, that would be nice. Just like two reoccurring auras would be something. Or we could just draw keep drawing crap. Um, that could be good too, you know. All right, let's go in on Acolyte here. No. So on the off chance, oh God. No, I should be going. Uh, I don't think I have a good play. Because if I go in on Acolyte, I lose my white creature um, with Prismatic Strands if they're wanting to cast it. I think it would probably be a poor cast here. I think they just take the trade off. Um, looking to cast anything? No. Alright. So Prismatic Strands like names a color. So... Theoretically, a way to play against it is to have one big white creature, one big green creature, and attack through. Um, as it is, however, I think we're pretty lost. I don't think it matters. So opponent cracked clue token. Four cards in hand. Jesus Christ, this deck draws like no tomorrow. Freeney's informant. 
he connived a planes to the graveyard. I think that was the first connive that it didn't end up in a 3-2 in all three matches. Okay, we can see a sizable attack in the air now. Um, I guess we're just taking it. So we're on 20. What's it? Down to 10? Down to 9. Uh, uh, 11, sorry. Taking 9. Alright, well, pretty close to dead. That's not going to help it. Um, well, our opponent's deck is to like designed to grind and draw cards and go deep. And a lot of their main deck and sideboard inclusions are pretty good against us. Um, so the fact the game went grindy and we lost isn't surprising. If you are looking for a sideboard cut in matchups like this, um, I would recommend Crefix's Insight as one that I've found that I think gives very good value. Um, so for three mana, reveal the top six cards of your library, put up the three enchantments from among them into your hand, the rest in the revealed cards into your graveyard. Um, I really like it because as you could see from that game, we had a lot of mana. I think we ended up on five mana and sort of like stuck there for a while. But if you're pulling like enchantments from your hand, you're going to like that. That's really good reload potential after a deck. That's just like fucking three for one. You, um, so yeah, big, big, big advocate for this if uh, that deck becomes more prevalent or if you're versing it a lot in your local meta. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, until next time, have a wonderful day. I'll see you then.